<laughs> Hi everyone, it's Scott Blumstein, Mr. Rama 2017. I'm with my good friend L.E. Girl, and we are in Augusta, Georgia, in a Denny's, and we haven't had a chance to do an interview, and I've been wanting to do it all weekend, and so we we're having breakfast together, and I decided to do the interview here. And so, L.E. Girl is American Leather Woman 2015, and we were here to judge the Southeast Leather Sir, Leather Boy Community Boot Black Miss Leather Contest, and I wanted to, to share Ellie with my audience because we met when I was competing in IML 40, and you have been a coach, and you've been a judge, and you've been handler, and, and you were an interpreter for one of my, my classmates at IML. And what I loved about you is that there's so much stress and tension and nervous energy when you're competing, and you always had a smile on your face, and you were kind of like the mother of the whole class. And, and I didn't know if you knew, like you realized how, the impact that you had on the brothers there, because you just made everyone smile, you made everyone feel comfortable, you put everyone at ease, and so I wanted to talk about your IML experience as an interpreter, um, and what was that experience like with, you had seven, we had 72 brothers, 71 brothers at IML, and you kind of were the mother hen of all of us. It's funny, um, you're saying mother hen, but then my, my contestants that I interpret for, they call me their leather godmother. That's sweet. That's <laughs> very sweet. And you um, were interpreting for one person, one brother or two brothers? One at your, I yes. mean one each year. Okay. I've had two that I've interpreted for. So the first year was Bruno, that was the first Mr. Brazil that uh, oh. competed. Um, and he, he needed a little more help because um, yeah, he, in Brazil they do things very, very differently. Um, they do things online. It was really interesting because he didn't know what interviews were. He didn't understand like what you know pop question was. He didn't understand any of this because so he was they, green. He was completely green. Like he was Mr. Brazil, yeah. but like the way. And when I asked him like what did they do there, he said that they had you know a bunch of people online and people voted for them and then they like you know the top five, ten, whatever it was, they went to a bar and they basically introduced themselves and people voted for them and that's how they won. And that was the contest. Um, and so they didn't know this whole scene. Yeah. And so when I started yeah. talking to him, which I started talking to him early because my Portuguese is very different than his Portuguese. Because it's a big country. It's a big country and I'm from the island so my my Portuguese is very different. Dialect. What they say is very antique Portuguese. I think so it's different dialect. <laughs> it's very different dialect. So it was like, you know, we started talking early so I could get used to his dialect and he can get used to yeah. my dialect. And to be honest, my mother didn't teach me things like dungeon and floggers <laughs> and all those things that we talk about right. in interviews yeah, and yeah. stuff. We didn't talk about that as a kid, so I didn't learn these words. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it was, I started early in talking to him, and he, um, he only had, like, he learned in school, like, through 12th grade or whatever, and then, like, hadn't used it since, so he was, he really was not comfortable, and so one of the things I did tell him to do was, like, you know, whatever he did know to really try to use it, because people are, I wanted the judges to connect with him, mm -hmm. and not with me, like, right. this is not about me, That's right. I want them to know you, yeah. like, this is about them yeah. knowing you, I am there if you need a word, you need help, but, like, I want them to get to know you. And that was my big, big thing for the weekend was trying to get them to know you, no, to know the contestant, yeah. trying to get the class and the judges to know the contestant. Um, your year was Raphael, and Raphael, like, he is a genius. <laughs> <laughs> like he's it, he needed a little bit of help but just it wasn't the same like he had the experience that Bruno brought mm -hmm. right and so Bruno was able he to already coach had him. that yeah. yeah so Bruno was able to coach him a little bit and um, and Raphael being uh, a PhD student and he had a lot more English that Bruno didn't okay. have 
he still had a little bit of help that he needed, but in general, he was doing really well. So for your class, um, because Raphael was doing so well and was able to, to uh, communicate with people a lot easier, I was able to help others a lot more. And I was, I really find myself like helping um, really connected with the international students, uh, the students, uh, the contestants, class, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like with Abel and, um, yeah, it, I mean just the international ones in general because the contest there is different, that's like, you know, English isn't my first language, so understanding like what it's like to be in this room and someone's talking and I'm like, I'm hearing words, I'm not putting it together, like, this is, real, you know, in the stress of that. And, and so really when you have a, a person that you're coaching, it, it's not set in stone, it's like you have to... It, it, you're figuring it out as you go along because every contestant is different and their needs are different. And their needs are going to be different. Sometimes, like with Raphael, I had a little more leeway, and so I was able to um, jump in with other people as needed. Okay. Um, with Bruno, I kind of had to spend a little more time with him because he really didn't understand. Like, he would just look at me, like they would be talking, and he's just the cutest thing. He was smiling and listening, yeah. and then he turned to me, like, What did he just say? <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Some advice that we could give people that have English as a second language always utilize having an interpreter. Oh my goodness. Anyone, anyone, no matter how educated you are or um, it's to you your know, advantage. How, it's, it's to your advantage. It, it's because it's so stressful. Like you're on that stage and you're hearing these words and there's this audience and you've got the stress and it's like you're, you're in, in the spotlight and even like the stress on the stage, you're changing yeah. clothes real quick and you're like, what am I doing now? Yeah. And it's just so stressful. And then you get there and it's like English isn't your first language. Yeah. So like you, utilize every tool that they give you. And it's like we're there. You may not need us. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, we'll, we'll translate if you need help, but like, you know, I, I mean, our goal or my goal and any of the translator's goal is really to let you shine yeah. and I really just wanted to do that for them and, and in the end they did, both of them made top 20, yeah. so That's it was amazing. like, um, but yeah, it was, it's a cool experience. And what's it like being like one of the few women backstage at IML? Because you're going through the paces when there's interviews and rehearsals and meet and greets that we that the contestant has to go through. You're with them every step of the way. So we're working that whole four days that we're in Chicago for IML, and you're there every step of the way. And you're one of the few women that are behind the scenes. And I think that's really interesting to get your perspective of what's that like when you see all of these hand, male handlers, all of these male contestants, all this male energy and sexuality and sensuality that's going on back here and this nervous tension. What's it like for you? Um, I think it's, well, it is kind of cool to be one of the only women. I don't know if I am the only woman. I know, like, Karen Morris has yeah, also handled. Yeah. But, but she's not with the contestants. She's I mean, not with the contestants. Like, I'm actually in every step of the way. So I am, like, one of, the, like, the only woman that I know of. Yeah. That's and, that, and that's Karen through, Ultra. Yes, Karen Ultra. So she has handled and so has been backstage. But isn't with a contestant where like they're go she's going into interviews yeah. with them yeah. and doing like being on stage with them yeah. with like the pop question and such. So like I have I'm the, one of the few people oh, the only woman that I know of that has actually gone through interviews. the contest. Yeah. Does that give when you're handling a contestant does that give you an edge? No Do you think? because I Or no. them an edge. No, no. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I mean, I literally, like, in the interview, like, I step back and, again, like, I'm, it's about them shining. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just off to behind, and they're up front answering the questions and talking and interacting. So you have to check your, check your ego. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I am, the, well, a lot of times I am the girl behind the curtain. So I try to just stay back and let them... We just judge the contest, and, and judging is, I always feel like it's very flattering to be asked to be judged. You're, you're picking the, the next generation of contestants. How do you feel about judging, and, and, and what do you what do you enjoy or like 
like or not like about judging? I enjoy judging. I enjoy um, judging too. I do. I do enjoy judging. Um, I appreciate the effort of people stepping up and um, being vulnerable. Yeah. It um, takes a lot of guts to stand on that stage and be judged. It takes a lot of guts to do it. Um, I'm not an easy judge, as you learned. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's, but a good, that's a good thing. Put them through their paces. Well, it, but part of a big thing for me is I just want to get to know them. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get to know them. And here was a very, it was a, a particular situation because I'm not from the southeast. Yeah, yeah. And so I didn't know these people. Yeah. I haven't seen them play. I haven't seen them do anything. So, like when I'm in those interviews and when I'm looking at them, I'm trying to get to know them. Yeah. And so that was like I just wanted to be able to connect with them and get to know them. Um, it's really cool to walk away and you know have a situation like we did this weekend with one of the contestants and just really connect with them and like you want to continue yeah, working mentoring, with them coaching, and mentoring yeah. and coaching like they've got so much potential so much potential. and that's nice to see yeah and you flew all the way from Oregon to Georgia and that's yeah. a big that's time and, and, and money and, and expense and, and away from your family and away from your your downtime and so that's <laughs> it's a big commitment to judge and and we give up our whole weekend. We're going to interviews and we're going to meetings, and, and we really appreciate you you coming. Is there anything that you'd like to add about your um, experience, or your that you would like to share with the audience about what it's like to go to IML or to judge or to be a contestant? I actually just realized I don't think I um, answered the question about like what it was like being backstage with all the male energy. Uh -huh. And one of the things I think. What's really cool about being at IML and my experience at IML, um, I was really nervous the first time I actually went to IML. How many times have you been? Four or five wow. times. Um, the first time I went was in 2011, uh -huh. and it was after I had gone to another event uh -huh. that was primarily a male event, and I was in the lobby, and someone actually came up to me in the lobby and told me that I didn't belong there. And that was a contestant that was no. some, uh, just someone in the audience? Just someone, just someone, and it was in the lobby. It wasn't like Edith. I was trying to go into a party. I was and just waiting for some friends and <laughs> meet up for lunch, and they went out of their way to tell me that. How did you respond, and how did that make you feel? Oh, it sucked. Like, I was just like, I'm just standing here. So what like, did you say? I didn't say anything. I didn't, yeah, okay. I was just like, oh my gosh. So... Then I went to IML and I was really nervous because I was handling someone, not backstage, but ha handling a friend, getting things ready for the room and stuff, for the contest. Uh -huh. um, Hi. Uh oh. <laughs> I was trying to feel. Would you like to take a drink? Would you like to walk Yes, please. Regular, right? Yes, please. Yes. Brand.